have a golf club. Yeah. Two days a week I have to play, they have to pay for it. Most times they just move me onto a golf course. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 crazy actor contract demands. I That's love that. I'm gonna get my agent on the phone right now. That's right. <laughs> no one's gonna kill that face. Man, no I'm telling you, I've, died, <laughs> I've done my share of dying. For this list, we'll be looking at the most surprising, noteworthy things actors have reportedly asked for in their contracts or on the set. We should note that without access to the contracts, we can't 100% verify some of these reports. So take them with a grain of salt. Which of these demands shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. She Can't Die – Queen Latifah No, we're not breaking news here that Queen Latifah is some kind of vampire or immortal being. But unless she changes her current contract demands, you won't be seeing a character she plays die in a movie anytime soon. But wait, didn't she die in Set It Off? Well, yes she did. This is the most tragic culmination of the day's events. <sighs> and that was one of the films that prompted her to begin making this contract demand. As she explained to James Corden, Latifah realized that whenever her character died, she could be missing out on something moving forward. If I die in these movies, I can't be in the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> get my agent on the phone. We will put a no-die clause in these future movie wow. contracts or I'll never get a sequel. We gotta hand it to her. It's a pretty smart move. Number 19. Equal billing, equal lines. Steve McQueen. There probably aren't many people who've called Steve McQueen chicken. But Paul Newman is allegedly one of them. He's even said to have added a rather profane word after it. Newman starred alongside McQueen in The Towering Inferno. What about your exhaust system? Well, it should have reversed automatically. It must have been a motor burnout or something. Sprinklers? They're not working on 81. Why not? I don't know. He reportedly said those things when he learned that his co-star was keeping count of how much dialogue each of them had in the script. But not only did McQueen count the lines, he also apparently demanded that they up the quantity he had to make it equal to Newman's. It's out of control, and it's coming your way. You got about 15 minutes. With all of this, you may be wondering who got top billing. The studio accommodated them both by putting McQueen's name first on the poster, but placing Newman's slightly higher. Number 18. A pricey wig. Juliana Margulies. There's no denying that Juliana Margulies made the role of Alicia Florrick on The Good Wife her own, and we can't imagine anyone else doing it better. We're sure there are those who also can't imagine how long it took to straighten her hair every day. Yes, it's true, Margulies' locks are naturally curly. However, when she learned that the character was to have straight hair, she reportedly had a great idea. Rather than spend all that time straightening and maintaining it, she would wear wigs. Everything good here? Everything's good here. Anything else? No. I'm good. If you're good. I'm good. They were made specifically for her hairline, with real human hair, and cost about $10,000 each. Number 17. Better dressing rooms than everyone else. Uma Thurman. Back in 2010, Uma Thurman was set to star in Eloise in Paris, a film based on the popular children's book. Now, it didn't get made, but they got far enough along in the process to have Thurman sign a contract. Some of her reported demands were very understandable. A no-nudity clause and control over how her likeness was used in the promotion of products. Have you had an action figure before? I've had an action figure or two, but, but not quite like this. However, her dressing room demands have raised some eyebrows. And it's not that she wanted a first-class trailer with all the accessories and creature comforts you could imagine. What caught our eye was the sentence at the end of the clause which stated, quote, no other cast member to receive more favorable dressing facilities. No kid. I didn't know that. Why would you? Number 16. Gets paid if co-star drops out. Mark Wahlberg. Did you know that Mark Wahlberg was originally going to portray the male lead of Silver Linings Playbook? So why did Bradley Cooper end up in the role that earned him an Academy Award nomination? Do you feel that? That's emotion. I don't feel anything. Well, it would appear that money played a part. Not only was Wahlberg's going rate apparently higher than Cooper's, but he had some pricey contract demands as well. 
We're referring to the alleged stipulation that he would receive a cool $900,000 were the leading lady to drop out. You can't keep me cooped up in here, okay? I am a peacock, you gotta let me fly! Wahlberg's reported demand is to, in essence, mitigate losses should the film's box office suffer due to a big name leaving a project. This did happen as Anne Hathaway was originally set to co-star. Number 15, the option to golf, Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson loves golf. That isn't an outlandish or particularly wild fact. Plenty of people are huge fans of the sport, and understandably so. However, unlike most of us who can't just take a few days off work to go golfing every week, Mr. Jackson makes it so he's contractually permitted to do so. That's right. The man who made Ezekiel 2517 extra famous loves golfing so much that his movie contracts have a clause allowing him to go hit the greens twice a week. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger. Now, that's what we call proper attention to one's work-life balance. I'm up at 5.30, 6 o'clock, I'm at the golf course by 6.30. If I have something to do during the day, I play 18. If I don't have anything to do, I'll play 27 to 36. Number 14, Three Tries, Dolph Lundgren. The 1987 Masters of the Universe movie isn't widely regarded as having been a success upon release, though it's gained something of a cult following. Our only hope of defeating Skeletor is to find the cosmic key. Now those creatures were after you for a reason, Julie. Have you seen it? One part of it that tends to stand out is Dolph Lundgren's performance. He plays our hero He-Man and has a rather strong Swedish accent. A Mattel marketing executive reportedly said, quote, I saw the rough cuts, I listened to Dolph Lundgren's voice, and I just about had a heart attack. Production even brought in actors to do voiceover work. I wanted him to uh, redub his voice, get someone else to speak for him. In his contract, he had the right to do it two or three more times, and he finally got it to where it wasn't too bad. But Lundgren actually had it in his contract that he had three tries to master it before they could insert someone else's voice. Victory. Number 13, an all-white dressing room, Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez told us that love don't cost a thing. But per Danny Minogue, if you want J.Lo to perform at Top of the Pops, it'll cost you an all-white dressing room. On her podcast, Minogue reminisced about the show and an experience involving Lopez. As the story goes, she was informed that the singer was arriving soon, but would only go ahead with the performance if her dressing room was completely white. We're not sure why Jenny from the Block made such a peculiar demand, but we are very curious about it. Number 12, a live bat, Nicolas Cage. Those who've seen 1988's Vampire's Kiss know that Nicolas Cage gets bitten by a bat in the film. You also probably assumed that it wasn't a real one. And you're right, it wasn't. But not because that's what Cage wanted. In fact, he reportedly argued with director Robert Bierman, demanding they use a live bat. He even had his assistant go out to try and catch one. As Cage reportedly said on the DVD commentary track, quote, at this time I was still very much a method actor and I would like to live my parts. Am I getting through to you, Alva? Thankfully, Bierman was able to convince him to go with the animatronic creature by hammering home the deadly risks that come with actual bat bites. Number 11, a beach hut and basketball court, George Clooney. The budget for the 2013 film Gravity is reported to have come in at around 80 to 130 million dollars. And while we don't know the full breakdown, it's been said that a sizable amount went to keeping George Clooney comfortable between scenes. Well, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is we're about five minutes from the ISS and I know where the Russians stash their vodka. While some stars insist on custom trailers and dressing rooms, Clooney allegedly took things up a notch with his gravity demands. He apparently had a specially made beach hut that was said to be fully decked out with amenities. He even reportedly had a basketball court put in. Hey, sometimes you just gotta shoot some hoops, right? Number 10, can't lose a fight in a movie. Vin Diesel, The Rock, and Jason Statham. The Fast and Furious franchise features plenty of fight scenes, but some of them are more strictly negotiated than you would imagine. Well, once you dig through 38 feet of concrete and steel, my fist and a body bag will be waiting for you on the other side. 
That's because three of the action stars who have appeared in the series, Finn Diesel, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and Jason Statham, all have stipulations in their contracts that put limitations on how bad of a beating they can take on screen. My dad said, he kicked your ass once. Young lady, watch your mouth. Considering they're often fighting against one another, it makes things pretty tricky. Johnson said to USA Today, quote, It's not always easy being an alpha, and it's two alphas. You know, that color looks good on you. Yeah, look a whole hell of a lot better with your blood on it. Yeah, good luck with that, Hercules. Number 9. No Mirrors in Heaven, Gary Busey Gary Busey starred in the 2003 film Quigley, in which he played a man who was reincarnated as a Pomeranian. And what about the really nice move he just made on the briefcase? When dogs have to go, they go quick. If you haven't heard of it, we'll give you a pass because it wasn't exactly well received. There's one scene in the film that's supposed to take place in heaven, but when he arrived on set, Busey demanded that they restage it. Why? Because according to Busey, he had already died and gone to heaven in real life, and could report that there were definitely no mirrors there. So, of course, all the mirrors had to be removed from the set. Number 8. Live Lobsters, Paris Hilton Considering her high-class tastes and high-maintenance reputation, it will probably come as no surprise that Paris Hilton has made some outlandish writer requests in her day. When she was supposed to make a cameo appearance playing herself in the 2010 comedy flick The Other Guys, she allegedly made a three-page list of requests which caused her to be booted from the production. The list included Grey Goose vodka and for live lobsters to be brought to her whenever she wanted them. Think there's a chance she just didn't want to be in the movie? Number 7. A Trailer for Workout Gear – Will Smith We know that some stars have pretty lavish trailers when they're filming a movie, especially when they're shooting far from home. But Will Smith really took it to the next level when he was filming Men in Black 3 in New York City. He received a massive two-story, 1,150-square-foot two-bedroom trailer, which was valued at approximately $2 million. But that wasn't enough. He also needed an extra trailer just for his workout equipment. Yup, that's right, he couldn't manage to squeeze any exercise into the first one. Not only that, he was also renting a five-bedroom apartment nearby. Number 6. No British Accents – Daniel Day-Lewis Daniel Day-Lewis may have taken home a Best Actor Oscar for his role as Abraham Lincoln in 2012's biopic Lincoln, but it sure was a long road to get there. The actor had numerous requests on set to accommodate the fact that he wanted to be in character at all times. But I carry within me, you must allow me to do it. He allegedly didn't break character for three whole months and even requested that everyone, even director Steven Spielberg, call him Mr. Lincoln. He also forbade anyone with a British accent from talking to him because it would throw off his method. I beg you, sir. Compromise. Or you risk it all. Number 5. A new pair of underwear every day. Eddie Murphy. Alright, it's last straw. I gotta whip your ass now. When Eddie Murphy shoots a movie, he likes to feel fresh. And that includes wearing a new pair of underwear and socks every day. This looks like a sock. It's a spy mask. It's a special spy mask. Right. Put it on. Looks like a sock. Hey man, this is a sock! That doesn't seem too unreasonable, right? Let us clarify. We mean brand new, like with the tags on. He allegedly wears everything once and throws it away, rather than washing and reusing it like most of us would. I'm glad you brought my clothes. Let's just say in this day and age where we're all trying to be a bit more ecologically conscious, he might consider putting a stop to these wasteful habits. Number 4. An Entire Hotel Floor – Justin Timberlake we get it, celebrities need their privacy and don't want to bump into fans while they're walking to the ice machine in their bathrobe. Okay, they probably have people for that, but Justin Timberlake allegedly took it to the next level when he requested that he have an entire floor of a hotel without any other guests on it. When he stayed at New Orleans Windsor Court Hotel, he reportedly also asked the staff to clean his doorknobs every two hours. We can understand being a bit germaphobic, but that's a little much. No problem. As long as you get your feet off my bed, they're disgusting. Number 3. A Rainbow on Wheels – Will Ferrell We know Will Ferrell has a good sense of humor, but did you know that it translates to his writers as well? My throat's sore, I've had a sore throat for a month and a half, and this is not an acoustic environment that's suitable to request this from me. People don't usually advocate making jokes in legal documents, but we can't imagine this was anything other than something to make the lawyers laugh. When he was working on Semi Pro, Farrell asked for one rainbow on wheels, stipulating that it could be painted on canvas as well as a 15 to 20 foot tall fake tree and a Janet Jackson style headset microphone. What was this all for? Perhaps we'll never know. And everybody check, check. here. 
Check, check, check. Dale. Check, 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 check. No, please, check, Dale. Check, check, I'm begging check, check. You want to shut this check. down, D-Man? Number two, a specific shade of toilet paper. Barbara Streisand. Some requests seem so bizarre that they can't possibly be true. But hey, all rumors start somewhere. Barbara Streisand is one of the best-known divas out there and has made a lot of requests to back up her reputation. She has asked for rose petals in her toilets, designer lamps and towels, but most notably, she asked for a specific shade of toilet paper to match the color of her skin. Does such a thing even exist? Have we been missing out on colored toilet paper all these years? What does Babs know that we don't? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Custom Thongs – Tom Cruise Tom Cruise is known for doing his own stunts, but after you learn this factoid, you may look at his plane jumps and building climbs a little bit differently. Cruise allegedly needs a very particular type of undergarment in order to perform those death-defying stunts – a thong. He requests that there be up to 50 soft, stretchy thongs on set when he has to do action sequences, because they reportedly improve his flexibility. Hey, it kinda makes sense. Slightly less sensational is the fact that Cruise actually insisted on hiring his own screenwriter when working on 2017's The Mummy. He also apparently refuses to allow his likeness to be used in video games or on action figures. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.